Your will take his will. He'll never force you. Never. God the Father did not force his son. And Jesus came right up to the very shadow of the cross. Remember something. Jesus, the son of the living God, but remember when he was in the flesh, he was as much man as though he were not God. Know that. I do not believe for one minute that Jesus wanted to die. I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe it. Of himself. And yet of being as much man as though he were not God. He had a will separate and apart from the will of God the Father. And that will was not surrendered until he came right in the very shadow of the cross. Right to the very point And he said, nevertheless, not to my will, but thy be done. And had he not surrendered his will to the will of the Father, believe me of a truth, redemption's plan never would have been perfect. You and I would never have had life eternal. You and I would never have had the privilege of being heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. For me to tell you that it's easy to surrender, I wouldn't. I'd like to take your face in my hands and say to you, it isn't easy what I'm saying to you isn't easy. And I'd look you directly in the face and say it isn't easy. But I plead with you, I will get down on my hands and knees and plead with you. Surrender that will of yours. Surrender it. You may aspire to great things and say, look what I can be. Look at my potentialities. I can be the world's greatest. The crowd will applaud. so temporary. It's all so empty when you realize how fickle people are. How short life is. The price is too great, really. I've weighed it all. And I made my choice. And my choice by choice I have chosen his will and that pride. The surrender the physical body. I'm talking about something. I'm talking about something that's real. I'm talking about something. I have chosen. It's my choice. I have chosen to surrender my body as a living sacrifice. 
praying it shall be acceptable unto him. A living sacrifice. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Being led of the Holy Ghost. It's by choice. I wasn't very old. I'm not quite sure how old. Less than ten years of age. <coughs> At our house, Monday morning, Mama always washed. Always. You've come from a home like that, too. Tuesday was ironing day, no matter what happened. You've come from a home like that, too. We had a laundry stove in the basement. And how often I've seen my mother. She's always boiled the white sheets and the pillowcases. One Monday morning, she had the boiler on the laundry stove in the basement. When a telephone call came and a relative was very ill, and they sent for Mama and said, would you please come quickly? And Mama said to me, now, Catherine, I'll be back. Don't touch anything. It was the wrong thing to say. But I'll be back just as quickly as I can. And after Mama was gone, I thought, I'll surprise her. I'll do the washing. I'll do the whole thing. I'll do everything. And when she comes back, she'll be tired. She'll be so surprised. She'll be so surprised. And I went down the basement. The boiler was full of water with the soap chips in it. I put the sheets in it. I got them out. I put the pillow slips in it. I boiled them, and when they were through, I boiled everything in sight. I boil the woolens. <laughs> I boil the colored clothes. I boil them all. And then I remembered my excitement when it was all over with my excitement was so great. I thought, won't she be surprised? I could never tell you the thrill on the inside. I could never, I could never begin to tell you how I felt. I could never tell you. We always hung our clothes out on the clothesline, you know. And there were parts of that clothesline that were a little too high for me. And I went in the kitchen, got the kitchen chair, and and uh, would stand on the kitchen chair to pin some of the. I thought some of them were looking a little strange, and I I, I pinned them on. And then when they were all dry. I got the clothes basket out. You'll never know how to this day what I'm talking about you. I, I, I can still feel the excitement. The excitement on the inside of me. Mama would be so happy. Mama would be so thrilled. I did the washing. When she'd come home, she'd find it all done. Four o'clock came, five o'clock came, Mama didn't come home. It was late and I didn't go to bed. I waited. I had to see her face when she saw what I had done. <laughs> and I had all 
of the clothes. They were all dry. Had them all in the wash basket. Had them in the kitchen. So the first thing she would see when she'd come home was surprise, surprise. I shall never forget. She'd been in the hospital all that day. So weary. Worried. Probably nothing to eat. And she came to that kitchen door. I'll never forget the look on her face. I'll never. She walked in. And she looked at that clothes basket. And she saw the expensive things that I had ruined. There was a little chalet coat. It was expensive. It was especially made from Kansas City. I had boiled it. It had shrunk to nothing. Some of her best things. I'll never forget her face. She stood there for just a moment. Looked at those things. And then she looked up at me. And she saw my face. I think it was the hardest words that my mother ever had to utter when she said, you did a good job. <laughs> I've often wondered what I'm going to say when I see Jesus for the very first time, no one in the whole world knows how much I love him. No one. No one knows. I would live on bread and water and work just as hard as I'm working today. If I didn't get a copper cent, if I didn't get a penny, if I had to hitchhike instead of ride, he knows my heart. I started out in Idaho on five cent rolls and sleeping in a turkey house. I'll go back again to the turkey house. I'll go back again to just enough sustenance to keep my body going. And I'll work just as hard. I've given my life. It is hasn't been for six months, or a year, or five years, or ten years. Yet never having seen